If you never learn how to EQ vocals, you'll never be good at mixing because EQ and vocals is the highest form of manipulation. Because with the EQ plugin, you can shape a vocal however you choose. It's free range. And a lot of people struggle when it comes to mixing because they overlook EQ. They want to copy somebody else's settings. They want to cut off the same amount of low end, the high and the mid. They don't understand. Their voice is different. The microphone that they used to record the vocals was different. The gear, the treatment, like the room is different. So EQ allows you to manipulate, like really manipulate vocals the way that you want. But if you stick with me to the end of this video, you'll know how to manipulate vocals using an EQ. But the only thing I need for you is to like the video and stay with me to the end. Step number one, we got to understand the interface. I'm using the Pro-Q 3 EQ because it has the analyzer and a lot of people have EQ plugins with analyzers. Most EQ plugins have a visual representation of the frequency spectrum with the graph displaying the frequency on the X axis and the gain on the Y axis. For the people that might not understand what I'm talking about, this is the X axis right here. So this line going across, this is the X going up and down right here. Like this is the Y. Then on the spectrum, you need to see down here, we have the frequency ranges. So we have 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1K, 2K, 5K, 10K, and 20K. In between them, we see different ones. So you're right here, like 32, right here, 65, right there, it's like 140. We can go to 300, 389, right there, 400 there. We can find 3K range within here. Like, you're not only limited to these right here. And what I'm showing you now is the different types of bands or nodes, if you want to call them that. We have bell, low shelf. We have a low cut. We have a high shelf. We have a high cut. We have a notch filter. We have a band pass. We have a tilt shift. And we have a flat tilt. And that's why I say this is the highest form of manipulation because we can cut specific areas we can boost specific areas and we can do multiple at one time see like if i do all of this right here that's gonna make this vocal sound completely different and also keep in mind when using eq anytime you take one of your dots and you raise it up you're boosting that frequency and everything that's in that frequency range and every time you reduce it you're cutting what's in that frequency range so now that we got some of the basic features out the way let me go into the buzzwords and how they correlate with each one of the frequency range first up is sub bass i have it marked off right here sub bass is between 20 to 60 hertz this range affects the deepest most powerful bass frequencies boosting here can add a sense of rumble so when it comes to vocals we don't need to be boosting or doing anything here in the sub bass that's if you got subs 808s bass lines that's what that's for all right not your voice not your vocals unless you just absolutely need it that's what you do right you would boost this that's why i'm saying this is the highest form of manipulation because once you understand what you can do within these frequency ranges and the buzzwords that people love to associate them with you're a dangerous person and next up is bass from 60 hertz to 250 hertz the foundation of your mix words like warm full and thump are often associated with this range Keep in mind, it is the 60 to 250 hertz range. So if you want warmer vocals, right, want it to feel fuller, you would manipulate the vocal within this range. As you can see, 60 to 250. And you don't even have to do it too much. Like we can go up if we need to add more warmth to a vocal, right? If we need to reduce some of the warmth, if it sounds too full, we need to take away some of that. You just subtract, not necessarily doing this little band right here. I'm just marking off each range, but you have to understand what each frequency range does, what the buzzwords correlate from it. The next up is low mids. The low mid frequency range is from 250 hertz to 1000 hertz. This range impacts the body and definition of instruments. Buzzwords include muddy, boxy, and clarity. I know I said instruments, but you got to keep in mind your voice is an instrument. Regardless of what people want to say, your voice is an instrument. So if your vocals are a little muddy, they're boxy, and you want more clarity, this is the range where you need to focus on. If we want the vocals to sound more full, we can go down here and mess with the full range, boost that up. But if we want them to be a little bit more full with more clarity, we just do two boosts on those right there and we'll be good to go. It's just however you choose because there's not one set correct way to EQ a vocal because everyone hears things differently. They want the vocal to be a certain way and the vocal is recorded completely different from the next person. Look, and next up, we're going to be talking about the mid-range. The mid-range is from 1,000 hertz to 5,000 hertz. So 1K to 5K. This area affects the presence, attack, and character of instruments. 
Words like presence, nasal, and harsh apply to this reason right here. So if someone's saying like the vocal sound harsh, you know what to do. You go to this range, do some subtractive EQ, some DSing up here, and kind of smooth that out to where it's not as harsh on the ears. And the high mid range is something you really need to focus on. For the people that want the crispy vocals, the bright vocals, those vocals that just cut through the mix, this is important. The high mid adds brightness and clarity. Terms like sibilance, sparkle, and crispiness, like I just said, like that is here in this range right here. 5K to 10K. Like if your vocals aren't crispy, that's what you need to focus on right here within this range right here. So if your vocals are full, like the clarity is cool, but you need them to cut through more to be a little bit more crispy. This is where you rock with it. Is. So you just go between this range, 5K to the 10K range. But last but not least, we're going to talk about the high frequencies. That's 10K and up. In this range, it adds air and sheen, right? So the buzzwords, they be like, yo, I want airy vocals. I want vocals that sizzle. I want vocals that shimmer. This is where you go, right? air like the mag eq the fresh air plugin now that we got that out the way i'm finna play a vocal real quick then i'm gonna mess around with the eq so you can see and you can hear what each movement does to the vocal i'm cutting this low right so i'm gonna do like this man I say the vocal's too bright and we need to take some of that out. So we want a filtered vocal. See, so now it's cleaner. They on see, they look down in over me. Now I'm a well, they can't reach. Chain my number, I don't speak. Foreign call with lot of seats. Teen it when those hot as see. Right around the privacy. That bro shit don't apply to me. Don't fuck with me. That's fine with me. They look down in over me. Now I'm a well, they can't reach. Chain my number, I don't speak. Foreign call with lot of seats. Teen it when those hot as see. Right around the privacy. That bro shit don't apply to me. Don't fuck with me. That's fine with me. It's fine. So it's completely up to us on how we want to EQ this vocal. And I'm just showing you different ways and different things that you could do and how, but listen, it's different ways on how to EQ a vocal. I'm just showing you what it does when you move certain things around. But I'm gonna be completely honest with you. If you want to get better at EQing vocals, manipulating vocals, you have to practice, right? Your vocals, somebody else's vocals, like there's gonna be vocals on my website that you can get and practice EQ and vocals. Like the vocals are already messed up. You just gotta figure out how to manipulate the vocals into whatever you want them to be. But I'm just saying, like if you want to get better, you have to practice. Nobody else is gonna teach you how to EQ vocals but yourself because you have to train your ear to hear the subtle differences.